welcome to Tinker with a T. In today's video, I will be working on assembling the rack stall that I bought to replace my bent axle. So I have finished cleaning up all the parts that came in the new axle that I bought. So my original axle for the car I found had a bent shaft and I didn't realize this until the very end of it, but when I was putting it back together I found that it was bent and instead of getting a new shaft I saw this axle for sale and decided to get a whole new axle because it came with a Rextel. Now a Rextel is this piece right here and these gears and this, this shifter mechanism. It is a two-speed splitter for the rear end. So this provides an underdrive lower gear in the rear axle of the car. Now this was the most popular accessory for the Model T in its time and still today. It is very popular. A lot of people like them. Specifically because of the weird gearing situation of the Model T. The Model T only has low and high gears. Two speeds. And low gear, top speed is about 15 miles an hour, so I believe. And uh, high gear, a well-tuned car can reach 50 miles an hour. So there's a very big difference in the ratios of low and high gear. So the Rockstall provided an intermediate gear, sort of a second gear in between low and high. And this was great for hill climbing because the Model T is on steep hills. They can struggle to get up the hill sometimes. So this provides an intermediate gear so you don't have to jump down to super low first gear when, when climbing a hill. You can have sort of an intermediate range, be able to climb a hill at, at 30 miles an hour instead of dropping down to 15 in first gear. So it's a really popular option because of that. Now I've heard people say they would never have a Model T without this. And I've seen people say they really don't help all that much and they didn't use it. So we'll see what I think of it. I live in a pretty hilly area, so I thought it might be a good idea, and it was a good option. I got a pretty good deal on the setup. So I think I'm gonna go with it and put this in the car and see how it works. So let's briefly discuss how it works. We have the two axle shafts here. Well, not the shafts, these are the casings. And this casing is just like the original. It is the same as what is in my car, a stock half of the casing. And this is for the passenger side, the right side of the car. And the left side has the Ruxtel on it. And so this piece, the top is the same, and then right about here down, it is different. So this casing is entirely different right here to accept the shifting mechanism. So this lever right here is connected to a shifter in the cab, so you can go high or low, back and forth. And that moves this back and forth uh, moving this locking fork. So this fork will lock in one position or the other. Now that fork moves this piece right here back and forth. So this, for the fork just connects right here and pushes that back and forth, which in turn locks it with this gear right here. So this plate is contained within the housing and locked solid. So the shifter will put this gear in place and lock this gear with a gear in the diff to engage the low speed. So let's take a look at the axle. I have it over here. So this is the axle. We have both the shafts and the diff in the middle. So it's very similar to a stock one, but it has some differences here and here. The um, reduction gears are contained within the differential itself. It's really amazing. It does not take up much more space than the stock uh, differential and has the low speed gearing in it. So this side right here is the side that the rock stool attaches to and right here is a little gear that the shifting mechanism connects and locks solid with the housing to stop that and engage the reduction gearing. So that's this setup. This side is exactly the same as stock. You have an outer roller bearing and an inner roller bearing right here. This side you only have an outer. The outer roller bearing goes right here, and the inner one is a giant ball bearing that rests right here. So I have the ball bearing over here. That's what this piece is. It's just a giant ball bearing that rests for the inner bearing. And then this is the outer roller bearing right here, and the two bearings for the other side as stock. So let's talk briefly about the bearings. Uh, this is the inner bearing. It is oiled by the oil from the diff. And this is the outer bearing. And it has a grease seal and is greased. It's not oiled with the diff oil. So there is a seal right about here somewhere. Uh, probably right about there. That is the grease seal. So it keeps the diff oil separate from the grease on the outer bearing up inside here. 
So originally that was just a felt washer right there around the axle. Then you had grease in here with a grease cup to grease it and another bearing and then another seal. So this is the outer seal right here. It is just a little metal washer and then a piece of felt inside and then the cap. And that is supposed to keep the grease in. This does a, it does a fairly decent job, they say, of keeping the grease in. Uh, the one that doesn't work is the inner seal. It, just a piece of felt to keep the oil out is a lot harder than this thick grease. The, the felt works pretty good. But the one to keep the inner bearing and inner oil within the diff, that seal can be a bit of a pain for the stock version. If it seeps past that, it will dilute your grease, and then you'll have leakage out this seal onto your brakes, and it's not as good. So I am going to be putting in a new neoprene seal for the inner seal that'll go right here. It's pushed in from the outside and sealed right there. So to change those, you have to take out the sleeve on the inside. You have to have a special tool to do that. And I don't have it yet. I'm going to get it. But that sleeve comes out. You put your new seal in, the sleeve back on, the bearing on the inside, and then your grease cap on the outside. So that's the uh, seal situation with this axle. Uh, the other situation is the thrust washers. And I believe I talked about this in a previous video about the differential. But just to recap, this is the original thrust washer that came in this axle, and it is Babbitt material. So Babbitt is great for a bearing material. It's still used in roller bearings. They don't use it like this anymore, but it is still used in certain applications. But they just used a thick washer out of the Babbitt for this. And it worked originally, but this washer is almost 100 years old now. And surprisingly, this one is not worn very much. It is chipped, but it's not worn. The ones in my axle were really worn. So this one hasn't been used quite as much, or they put a new one in, I would suspect. But anyway, the you don't want to reuse those because the material is really soft and it's really easy to shatter, especially when it's this old, it has developed stress cracks in it. And then it just gets a little jar and completely shatters and you lose that much of thrust in your axle. So your axle can move back and forth like that. And that's not good. Your wheel can move back and forth that little bit of movement can mash your brakes, you'll lose your parking brakes, and you can really do a lot of damage with that metal floating in your diff. So it'll do a lot of damage if that breaks. So it's really good and it's cheap just to replace them with a brass. So this is a brass thrust washer, exactly the same, but it's made of brass. So this will do the same wear qualities uh, for the bearing surface, but it will last a lot longer and won't break up like the Babbitt will. Now on an original axle, and like you may have seen in one of my previous videos, a stock axle will need two of these. It has one on each side. It has four bearings, two on each side, and two, one of these on each side. Uh, but because of the uh, Ruxtel setup on this, it only needs one thrust washer. There is no thrust washer on the Ruxtel side. So I'm only going to have to use one for this axle setup. But that is the brass washer that I will be using. So I think I finally got this axle fully assembled and ready to go in the car. So I have assembled the main axle housing along with the torque tube and rear radius arms. 
Now this axle housing, I've had to take it apart like four more times since I first put it back together. Kept realizing one more thing I should have checked or changed. So definitely not the most optimal way to do it, but I'm still learning. So I had to double check the pinion clearance on this between the pinion and ring gears right here. I forgot to check that while I had it apart, so I take it back apart to check that. Turned out okay. The gears are still a little bit noisy. Um, I forgot to turn it while it was still together the first time to see if that was the way it was before or not. Um, but I am certain that nothing is rubbing or misaligned. So I think it's just noisy with no oil right now. But I had to double check that to be sure. I also wanted to double check that the roller bearing was not on backwards, and it is not. That is important because the roller bearing on this side of the housing that is connected with the Rextel, that roller bearing is also a thrust bearing, so it helps with side-to-side -side thrust. So if that's put on backwards, it'll wear out really fast. So you want to be sure that's not backwards. Uh, I think some of them say thrust here or have an arrow pointing which way it is. Um, uh, this one, I just verified that it was on the same way that it was when I took it apart and the thrust side is right. So I'm pretty sure it's on right now. Um, and I changed out the thrust washer and then I had to verify that there wasn't too much end play and there is not. Uh, sometimes with those thrust washers, you will have to uh, sand them down or face them off a little bit because they're oversized a little bit and they can be too tight. This one wasn't. I was concerned about that because it felt like it was binding, but it's not now. So I, I think I'm okay. But sometimes you will have to adjust the thickness of those thrust washers too. Especially with ones that have one on each side. Because this is a rock stool, I only have to do a thrust washer on one side. If you had to do it on both sides, then you would have to adjust the thicknesses to be sure to set this pinion clearance. But because I have a rock stool and the roller bearing is also a thrust bearing, it already sets the pinion clearance. So it's not nearly as big of an issue on this, and I was really happy about that. It didn't end up being as much work as I was expecting to get that clearance uh, set right. So I have this done. Uh, if you have any questions about this, I would highly recommend going to the Axle book. I believe Chaffins, Chaffins, I don't know how to pronounce it right, uh, but they published a uh, Axle rebuilding book, several different editions, ones with Ruxtals, without uh check back to those i don't have them everything i read says to get one if you're rebuilding a rear axle and i didn't actually rebuild this i just tore it apart to check everything and pretty much put it back together uh, so i didn't have a need for one yet and so i don't have it uh, but if you are rebuilding this just go straight to that it seems to be the leading expert on rebuilding rear axles uh, one final note on this though is that if you have any problems with the rear axle, it is highly recommended to go through and double check everything. That's why I wanted to tear this apart and check everything, uh, and it all turned out to be good. But if it's not and something breaks in here, it can be a pretty big safety issue because if you break something, your wheels lock up, you can easily break the drive shaft, and because the only brakes in the car, or your, your pedal brake, is a transmission brake, if anything breaks in this drive assembly, you're without your primary brake and you have to use your emergency brake and it can be a pretty big safety hazard uh, to lose brakes all of a sudden. So it is very good if you have an old car to go through and check the rear axle assembly. So that's what I did. I did not fully rebuild this, but I checked it. I checked the bearings to make sure they were within sizes. They're supposed to be a uh, half an inch. Mine measured 0.49. So that's within tolerance for safety. So the, the bearings and everything are good. So I'm pretty happy with this rear axle. And I think it will uh, do its service for quite a while without needing another uh, look into. So now I have it all set up in here. I just have the uh, ball joint suspended under the car right now. And it's not tied into your axle. It's just sitting here right now. Uh, for the next video, I'm going to be setting the engine in here. So I left this loose. I'm going to set the engine in and then it'll be easier to line up the U-joint with this loose. I can just set it on there is my plan. But we'll see how that goes. I'll get working on that and hopefully have a video out on it here pretty soon. Now I have finished assembling the rock stool and installing it in the car. I think I have everything ready to be able to put the engine back in the chassis. So be sure to look out for that video that will be coming out soon. If you enjoyed this video, please hit that subscribe button and like the video. and Leave me any questions if you have any comments or concerns down below. Thank you for watching. Thank <laughs> you.